My name is Sangbom Kim from Seoul National University. I would like to thank AAPPS for giving me the opportunity to introduce my recent article in the AAPPS bulletin. So there is a growing interest in artificial intelligence or AI thanks to recent breakthroughs. When we think about AI, we usually think about computer software, but the computing hardware is also a very important factor to consider in AI research. So the question is, why is hardware research important for AI? The reason is that people are becoming more ambitious with AI technology and we are applying AI technology to more complicated problems or better results. This resulted in exponential growth in number of neural network parameters. And the recent trend shows that it takes only 3.5 months for 2x growth. Therefore, we need more computing power, computing hardware to provide enough, enough computing power to deal with all these AI workloads. However, the growth of uh, hardware computing power is slowing down. Therefore, there is a growing gap between the software and hardware. And to overcome this growing gap, there are various ideas to come up with innovative computing hardware for AI. So when it comes to a new computing hardware for AI, the near-term efforts are centered around GPUs, ASICs, and FPGAs that are expected to provide 10 to 100x more computing power than conventional CPUs. And to get another 10 to 1000x gain in hardware computing power, various disruptive ideas are being explored. One of them is neuromorphic computing. The principle of the neuromorphic computing is loosely inspired by how brains work. The neuromorphic processors have several key differences from conventional computers. So for example, neuromorphic computing, computing hardware uh, uses non von Neumann architecture. The conventional computing architecture uses von Neumann architecture where the data uh, moves back and forth between the CPU and memory through a narrow bus. Therefore, when you move a lot of data between memory and CPU, there can be a bottleneck which slows down the computation. On the other hand, non von Neumann architecture merges the CPU and memory and executes some computation in the memory devices themselves. And another key feature of the neuromorphic computing is the potential use of system level analog computing. These neuromorphic processors can be roughly categorized into four different types depending on the type of neural network and the type of synaptic device. As for the type of neural network, a neuromorphic processor can either implement artificial neural network, ANN, or spiking neural network, SNN. The artificial neural network is used for frame-based machine learning, which is a more conventional approach where conventional frame-based sensor, such as video camera, is used to generate a series of images or frames which are sent to a machine learning processor frame by frame. On the other hand, the spiking neural network 
is used for spike-based machine learning, where spike-based sensors generate a train of spike events asynchronously and continuously in time. These spikes are directly sent to a spiking neural network processor where it gets processed for inference and training. Currently, ANN is widely used for commercial applications. On the other hand, SNN is still at early research stage and it is sometimes called third generation neural network because it is anticipated that SNN can be more power efficient than conventional approaches and it can bring AI to edge devices such as cognitive IoT, mobile, and robotics. Even though SNN research is in early stage, it's gaining traction recently thanks to industry leaders actively leading the SNN research. For example, Intel recently created SNN neurofic chip named Luihi and collaborating with academic government and industry research groups to advance the SNN research. These are some of the examples in the neuromorphic processor landscape. Again, some of the neuromorphic processors implement conventional ANN, while others implement SNN that is more exploratory. And some use conventional memory devices such as SRAM and DRAM, while some use emerging memory devices that not only store analog weights but also executes computation in the memory devices. In this video, among these four types of neuromorphic processors, all of which are very interesting, I will focus on what I have been working on, which is non-volatile memory based spiking neural network processor. So these are two publications on which today's presentation is based on. Both of these two chips implement spiking neural network using emerging memory synaptic devices. To design a neuromorphic chips, one needs to explore various topics ranging from materials, devices, circuits, architectures, algorithms, and applications. For example, one needs new materials and devices to implement new computing paradigms such as neuromorphic computing. Algorithms can compensate non-ideal properties of materials and devices. Circuits and architectures need to be carefully designed to efficiently implement algorithms based on new materials and devices. On next few slides, I will explain some of the key ideas we focused on for each of these topics. So when it comes to materials and devices, we used phase change memory cells as synaptic devices. Phase change memory stores data by changing the phase of a phase change material and they have different electrical resistivity depending on the phase of the material. The amorphous phase has high resistivity and crystalline phase has low resistivity. So to make a long story short, we can create a variable resistor using phase change memory by partially crystallizing or partially amorphizing the phase change material between two electrodes. And these variable resistors play a very important role in 
neuromorphic computing. So if you have a array of variable registers like this, basically you can store the data in these variable registers, which are analog values or weights. But at the same time, you can do a computation. So for example, if you apply voltages and measure currents from this resistor network, what you realize is that they compute this metric vector multiplication. So by changing the G value, which is variable conductance values from PCM cells, you can conduct the matrix vector multiplication. In addition, you can also do a this computation as well, where you are changing the conductance values in a matrix using two vectors. So here we have Q2, Q3, Q1 as a vector is coming in as a purse in this side. And you have P1, P2, P3, which is coming in from the right side. And when these two purses overlap with each other, the memory cell in between gets programmed by a fixed amount. So by implementing such a scheme, you can implement this operation using the memory array. And when it comes to algorithms, we implemented a algorithm called Restricted Boltzmann Machine, or RBM. And in the RBM itself, it needs these operations, such as forward propagation, backward propagation, and positive and negative weight updates. And with the spiking neural network hardware, we implemented these operations using biological neural models, such as RIF neuron and STDP neuron. So on next slide, I will explain how we implemented this RIF and STDP. So this is how we implemented RIF and STDP in a circuit. So we use two transistors and one variable resistor. In RIF mode, we turn on the upper transistor and flow the current through the variable resistor. And the current gets integrated using the capacitor. So the RIF is similar to a read operation because we don't change the resistance of the variable resistor. We simply reads the resistance value and stores it in the capacitor. On the other, other hand, in the STDP mode, we turn on the lower transistor and there are two pulses coming in to the synaptic cell. And when these two pulses come in at the same time, it turns on the transistor and there will be a large current flowing through the PCM cell, which changes the resistance value of the PCM cell. So the STDP operation is similar to program or write operation in the, for the memory cell. And the reason why we separated the RIF and STDP operation is because as we discussed at the beginning of this video, the important property of SNN is asynchronous and parallel operation. So by separating the path for RIF and STDP, we can operate these axon drivers and neural circuits asynchronously, and the operation mode of the PCM cell will be determined by the operation mode of axon driver and neural circuit. Therefore, individual 
PCM cells in the array can operate asynchronously and in parallel uh, without interfering with other septic cells in the same array. And we eventually um, added one more transistor. So the 2T1R synaptic cell became 3T1R because for the RBM algorithm, we need to read the PCM cell in the reverse direction as well. So to read the cell resistance in the reverse direction, we added one more transistor, which is in this red color. And also, we doubled 3T1R structure because sometimes the synthetic weights need to be negative value. So the 3T1R represent positive weight and the other 3T1R represent the negative weight and the sum of these two will represent the total weight which can be either positive or negative. With that, we actually implemented the chip, which is shown here. And you can see that the 6T2R synaptic arrays are located here. And it's being driven by the circuits, which represent the neurons and axon drivers. And as you can see from here, we did the MNIST training with the chip. And you can see that the chip shows um, the learning capability based on the RBM algorithm. To summarize, we tackled various problems to successfully develop SNN neuromorphic processor. As for material and devices, we used phase change memory cells to store analog synaptic weights with in-memory computing capabilities. As for circuits and architectures, we fully enabled asynchronous and parallel computation. And with that, we implemented restricted Boltzmann machine algorithm for supervised and unsupervised learning. You can find more details at this uh, link where you can read the full paper. Thank you for your attention.